If you have your Bibles, I pray that you do plan to preach from it. We are serving the Lord. This is our theme for the year and all that I do in 2022. Ask yourself the question. John 9, 4 says, I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man, no woman can work. We are a work in progress. We are progressing towards completion, the kingdom building, witnessing, lifting up the name of Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And that is a promise from God. But if you have your Bibles, we're coming from the book of Matthew, the night chapter, starting at the 35th to the 38th verse, if you would please rise to your feet in honor of God's word. That is Matthew, the ninth chapter, the 30, starting at the 35th to the 38th verse, just four, five, four, four short verses, four short verses. If you have it, say amen. If you need more time, say hold up, Pastor. Amen. And it reads as follows. I'll wait for you, Latham. I'll wait for you. Take your time. Don't run. Don't run. And it reads as follows. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray ye that the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. You please be seated and pray with me now. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, this is the day that you made, and I am truly thankful for it. Father God, be with each and every person in the, under the sound of my voice, Lord, that they hear your word today, Lord, that they seriously take a thought and thinking about how they are living their life. Are they living it for the world, or are they living it for Christ? Are they just getting whatever they can, or just getting by? Father God, you are our strength. You are our hope. You are our redeemer. So right now, I pray for someone, anyone, who under the sound of my voice will give their life to Christ, will give themselves over to you, Lord, will submit to your will, to your purpose for their life. Father God, some of us right now are stubborn, stuck in our ways. But Lord, let us humble ourselves and submit to your will. Lord, let the congregation see you and not me. Make me small, but you rise up in me. Let them hear your voice. Let me, let me give to them what you gave me in private to encourage them today, to be in service for you. Lord, we thank you now in advance for that one, that two, that whosoever that want to give their life to you in the building of your kingdom. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we pray and give thanks. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Give an honor to God. And to all the saints in Christ sitting here before me, I would like to lift up verse 37 as my sermonic text. And it says, Then he said unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The harvest is plentiful, but the labor, laborers are few. I'd like to speak from the thought this morning, Help Wanted. Apply to the Savior. Help wanted. Apply to the Savior. Turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, oh my neighbor, do you need a job? Amen. Today we'll continue the series, It's Time to Get to Work. We'll continue the series, and this is the last installment in the series, It's Time to Get to Work. Today, each and every one of us is going to fill out a job application in our hearts with Jesus and begin working for him. That is my hope. That is my prayer. That is my desire as your pastor. But as you as an individual saint, you have to fill that out, the application out. You have to pin it in your mind. You have to commit to that idea of working for the Savior because help is wanted, you must apply with the Lord. Now, here's a question I know everyone asking around here. How does work get done in the church? 
Well, it's done by the dedicated people, Yvonne, who love Jesus, like yourself. Let me be clear about one thing. I learned this in the Marines, Richard, that no one will truly follow a leader that doesn't set the example for service. Andy, that means when it's time to get down to business, when it's time to get dirty, you got to do it too, as a leader. Time to run five miles, you got to leave from the front. Sean, time to do push-ups, you got to get down and do it too. Let me be clear about it. It's the same thing. I wouldn't ask anyone here to clean a toilet unless I was willing to do it first. Amen? It's not just the pastor's job, and it's not just the deacon's job to evangelize, but it is every born-again Christian's job to reach the loss of this world. It is up to us as believers to witness to the lost. We have been called to serve, not to sit. Let me be clear about it. We've been called to serve, not to sit. God has an expectation for us to work for him. It's called the Great Commission. You heard me say it before. It is our directive. It is a call to service into this dying world and witness and save those who are lost to keep them from going to hell. You see, our job is to populate heaven and keep less people from going to hell. Somebody ought to shout on that. And that's what we're going to see here in the text today. Jesus is doing a lot of work, but wants to know, is there anybody else, Paul, willing to do work with him, work for him? He has a job opening in his kingdom and has placed a sign out saying, help wanted, apply to the Savior. Now, look at the text, verse 45, 35. Jesus is calling us to service, not to watch, but to work. Verse 35 says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. This is where I'd like to give you three for the Trinity, for the glory of God. We see my first point. My first point, we see Jesus' lecture tour. And while touring, he taught the gospel and he healed the sick. We see Jesus' lecture tour. While touring, he taught the gospel and he healed the sick. Jesus was touring all the cities and villages in the Galilean area. He was lecturing extensively in all these cities. I would have loved to hear Jesus speak. He makes it a point throughout all the Gospels to teach at the local synagogues because that's where the people were, at church, learning about God. You see, Luke 44 and 43 says, He said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also because for this purpose I have been sent now Nancy Jesus knows his mission is to teach but look at his curriculum he's teaching and preaching the gospel of the kingdom now the word gospel for those who don't know it means in the Greek good news good news Jesus is bringing the good news about the kingdom of God he's teaching it to an audience that desperately need desperately needs to hear the word of God preaching by the living word somebody say a sweet name with me somebody say Jesus it is the living word preaching the word you are literally living listening to heaven itself preach that must have been an amazing thing Jesus is doing what he has come to do bring the good news of salvation Brooke he's teaching how much God the Father loves all of his people you see he's not teaching but reaching the people he's meeting their basic needs providing both spiritually and physically. Spiritually, he's preaching the word, the good news. Physically, look what he's doing. He's providing healing. Look at the text. He's healing every sickness and every disease. Jesus isn't limited on what he can and will heal. He's healing every sickness. Look at the text. And every disease. So, if Jesus can do this, explain to me why Jesus can show mercy on a person that is ill, and why can't our insurance companies that are blessed with millions of dollars can't be willing to pay for a procedure for a person in need? Hello, somebody. If the Savior can meet every one of our needs, why can't you, Mr. Insurance Company? Why can't you, Mr. HMO? Especially if we're paying prices that are so high to maintain our insurance policies. Amen? So when your HMO, your CMO, and your OEOEO won't cover the co-payment, won't cover the treatment later, won't cover the therapy, what you need to do to get well, whatever it is, Jan, remember, we serve a God that can heal with a word, heal with a touch. He sees your suffering. 
glory. Look at the text. Healing every sickness and the disease among the people. Erica, we have to reach out on faith and pray to our Father who are in heaven. Because Jesus, by his stripes, we are healed. Somebody should shout right there. You see, Luke 4, 18 and 19 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has, a, has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. I don't know about you, but I ain't living in a million dollar home. I don't know about you, but I'm not living in a thousand dollar home. I'm not like by you. I'm not living in a project or a trailer. But wherever you're living, he's here to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, Jesus said. Anybody been heartbroken? Anybody been sad? Anybody been depressed lately? He's come to proclaim the liberty to the captives. We've been trapped in our houses in 2020. We're, he's bringing recovery to the sight to the blind. He is setting liberty to all those who are oppressed. But here's the best part. Proclaiming the acceptable liberty of the Lord. So I gotta ask this question to somebody here today. Anybody here ready to be set free? Anybody ready to be healed from drugs? Healed from alcohol? Healed from debt? Healed from hate? Healed from fear? Low self-esteem? Healed from that pain in your body that's wrecking up and down from your head to your toe? Healed from loneliness? Healed from heartbreak? We have a Savior who knows, understands, and shares our sorrows and gives us hope for tomorrow. How do I know this? How do I know this? Look at the text, verse 36. And when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion and had compassion on them because they fainted, were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Have mercy. I'd like you to give you my second point. We see the languishing sheep. It moved Jesus to be filled with compassion for the people's need for comfort. We see the languishing sheep. It moved Jesus to be filled with compassion for the people's need for comfort. Brothers and sisters, Mary, we are the sheep of Jesus' pasture. He is our good shepherd who gave his life for ours. He knows all his sheep by name. Minerva, he knows your name. Richard, he knows your name. Deb, he knows your name. Anel, he knows your name. Rachel, he knows your name. Jesus is my shepherd. I shall not want. Jesus leads me in the green pastures and provides for all my needs. Lorraine, when I am spiritually weak, he restores my soul. When I am misdirected, when I'm lost, can't find my way, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. When I'm scared, afraid of dying, afraid of evil, he is with me and I will fear evil. Why? His rod and his staff, they comfort me. Anybody want to serve a God like my God? This Jesus, this Jesus I'm talking about, he sees our every needs, meets and exceeds our every expectation of him. To God be the glory. How do I know this? How do I know this? Look at the text again. He saw the multitudes and was moved with compassion. Meaning he saw hurt people Hurt. Help me out, somebody. He saw hurt people hurt. Jesus wants better for his children. Miss Rebecca, he wanted to end their suffering. He wanted to end their languishing. Now, the word language means to suffer, to waste away, to rot, and to decay in such a slow, painful manner. You see, Jesus sees all, knows all, and is willing to save all. Oh, man, somebody should have shot it right there. I'm going to say it again. He sees all, he knows all, and wants to save all. Jesus knows everything you and I feel. He knows your pain. Hebrews 2.18 says, For in him himself has suffered being tempted. He is able to aid those who are tempted. That's why he was moved with compassion. Look at the text. He saw how weary the people were, how worn out they were. People were so weary, they were exhausted. Look what happened in the text. They were fainting. Look at the condition of the people. They were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Jesus wants to provide for the people, his people with comfort. He saw their weaknesses. He saw their pain. He saw their suffering. Jesus invites every one of us daily to follow him. Matthew 9, 28 says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you 
rest. Somebody say rest. Rest is an invitation of comfort from the Savior. Aren't you glad that Jesus knows how to meet your every need? Yvonne, look at this. There are people. There are people. We are the people. These people in the text. We the people. Today's people still are busted and disgusted. Don't have any comfort. Full of worry. Full of doubt. Full of fear. Still spiritually lost because we love the world more than we love Jesus. Have mercy. Somebody. Why? Why? Because we place all our hope and trust in all the wrong things. The things of this world. We trust in the poor leadership of the politicians, the Democrats and Republicans, who can't find their way out of a wet paper bag. Not trusting God to lead us, we spend all our money on the wrong things in this world, but not tithing. Hello, somebody. We are always crying about how broke we are, but not tithing to God who can supply us, supply us with all our, his riches and needs through his glory. We're sick and can't get well, putting more faith in doctors than in Jesus, who is the great physician and never lost a patient. We're complaining and not praying. You want things to change. You want things to get better. Then get some Jesus in your life. And look what will happen. Look at the text. Look at the text. Jesus was moved with compassion because he sees all that you and I go through. He will provide all the comforts you need if you come to him, if you give your life to him. You can't keep running to this world. You can't keep running to the world looking for salvation when salvation is only found in one name, the name of Jesus. 1 Peter 5, 7 says this about how much Jesus cares about you. Casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Put your faith in him, not the things of this world. You've been trusting everything in this world, and it's let you down. It's let you down, Sean. But you're not trusting in the Savior. Let me tell you this. It's never too late. Start today. Start now. Start trusting in Jesus. Ain't nobody going to serve a God like my God. Come on, give him the fruit of your lips and somebody say hallelujah right now for him. We see, let us review. We see my first point. We see Jesus let you, let you to her. And while touring, he taught the gospel and he healed the sick. I thank God for him healing the sick. My second point, we see the languishing sheep. It moved Jesus to be filled with compassion for the people's need for comfort. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our griefs to bear. Thirdly, and lastly, we see the labor shortage. The labor shortage. Notice the workload. And Jesus' prayer for the workers. Notice the workload and Jesus' prayer for workers. Workers are needed. Look at verses 37 through 38. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray ye, therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. The question I have for everyone here today, this morning, who is willing to do the will of our Father God? The time for lip service is over. Look at your family, look at your neighborhoods, look at your city, your state, your country, look at the state of this world. If you haven't been watching the news lately, there was a massive volcano the other day that exploded. The Russians are threatening to invade the Ukraine. I shared this with everyone last uh, Wednesday night at Bible study. Mark 13, 7 and 8 says, But when you hear of the wars and rumors of wars, that's Ukraine trying to be invaded by the Russians, don't be troubled, for such things must happen. And then for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. But let me be clear about this. There will be earthquakes. Well, that if anybody knows anything about a volcano, volcanoes shake things up in various places. How various... The island of Tongo, that's in the middle of the Pacific somewhere. That's a various place. There will be famines and troubles. Will anybody have some troubles? I keep seeing the numbers go up and down for this Amicron virus, for the Delta virus, for every kind of us. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, these are the beginning of sorrows. But that's not the end. 
That's not the end, but the end is getting close. The time, there is no overtime. Not like a football game when the game is over, they give you extra time when there's a tie. No, when Jesus comes back, hello somebody, when Jesus comes back, there will be no overtime. It's way past time to start witnessing to a dying world, amen? Jesus here in the text. It's talking to his disciples. After having been on this lecture tour, he saw the people languishing. He tells his disciples there is a labor shortage. In other words, there aren't enough people to work it for the harvest. Now let me explain what a harvest is. It is working in the world to save lost souls. Lost souls. Harvest represents the reaping of crops or grain that a farmer has sown. The lost souls of this world are the crops ready for harvest, but there aren't enough laborers. The text says, but the laborers are few. That's a labor shortage. Jesus knows that his disciples are going to be the first working out there in the workforce to enter into the world, teaching the gospel. Jesus has been ready in them, preparing them, teaching them so that they can fulfill the mission of the Great Commission. Going out into the world, preaching and teaching everything that he's taught them to the world. He's passing it on to them. But still they need more laborers. Why? Look at the text. The harvest is truly plentiful, meaning the workload is large. It's huge. There's a lot of work to do, but not enough workers, Mr. Nell, to do it. Look at the text, verse 38. Pray ye, therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Jesus directs the information to his disciples for a reason. You see, Brandy, first you got to pray. You can't do this without the help of the Father, our Lord, the Lord of the harvest. With prayer, you can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Second, it's to let you know and let them know there's a lot of work to be done. Third, they're going to do most of the work at first, but they need to recruit more people by witnessing and spreading the message of the gospel. But lastly, fourth, they must preach, teach, and reach so that people can be saved. That prayer has to have the right-minded people, Christ-minded people, kingdom-building people in mind. People who want to work, not watch, but work. That prayer is coupled with the thought Here it comes, somebody may not like this It's coupled with the thought That there comes a time When effort must be backed up By showing up and working Hello somebody Not lip service Meaning you bump your gums and say What you're going to do, what you want to do But by showing up and working Let me tell you what the life, life application point is this It's time to decide Whether or not to participate in the building of God's kingdom. Take a close look at your life, brothers and sisters. Ask yourself the question, what have you done lately for the Lord? Now you can take the attitude of the second son that we talked about last week. You remember him last week. He said to the father, I will work and didn't show up and lie to the Lord. Now the Lord's going to call you a liar, not me. Or you can be like the first son who said, I'm not going to work, but repented and then worked for the Lord. Now, personally, I would feel ashamed watching everyone else work and I reap the benefits of their labor. I would feel guilty. How about you? Jesus wants to know what you're going to do. Are you going to build my kingdom or not? Are you just going to sit there and watch? Randy, there are some help wanted signs posted everywhere. Some employers are work offering signing bonuses. I'm thinking about getting a few myself. Deb, they're offering $15 an hour to start with benefits. But Margie, when we choose to work for the Lord, there are some great benefit packages like eternal life. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. There's benefits like resurrection, Richard. John 11, 25 says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though they may die, shall live. 
We have victory over life, over death, Yvonne. First Corinthians 15, 57 says, Thanks be to God who gives us victory through Lord Jesus Christ. We have a new home. I'm looking forward to a new home. John 14, 2 says, My father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. That's a promise from Jesus. But it gets better. You feel the sick, your body hurting. We get a new body. Philippians 3.21 says, I will transform your lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the workings by which he is able to subdue all things to himself. In other words, you're going to have that, if your figure eight ain't straight, now you're going to have your figure eight. If you ain't got muscles, you're going to be built up. God has given you a new body. Satisfaction with your job. You hate your job. God's going to give you happiness with your job. 15, 58, 1 Corinthians. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, un always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain for the Lord. You need a great vacation plan? Revelations 14, 13 says, I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. From now on, yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest. Somebody say rest. You're going to rest from all your labors and your works will follow them. So brothers and sisters, I got to ask this question today. The night is coming when no man can work. Jesus wants to know, are you ready to work? The sign is on there. Help wanted. Go back. Go back to one. Go back to one. Yes. Help wanted. Apply to the Savior. There's no experience required. It just requires faith. Age is not an issue. You could be 10 to 22. You could be from 8 to 80. It doesn't matter. Great benefits. You know the health and dinner plan that God got for you. And the best part, living eternally with him. To God be the glory.